वी आर हेयर टू अंडरस्टैंड नाउ वेन टू सेल एंड वेन टू स्टे वो सुना है ना अभिमन्यु चक्रव्यूह में घुस तो गया था बट निकलना कब है और कैसे है वो उसे नहीं पता था Which means when to sell the stock is the most important aspect of wealth creation, and who better to guide us than none other than Mr. Rajesh Kothari, founder and managing director at Alpha Accurate Advisor, investment advisor and portfolio manager. Alpha Accurate Advisors Private in Private Limited is one of leading SEBI registered portfolio manager managers and investment advisory firm in India. The firm the firm follows principles of protect capital, create wealth. Let me also take a moment to introduce Mr. Rajesh. Mr. Rajesh Kothari is the visionary founder and managing director of Alpha Accurate Advisors and the driving force behind making AAA one of India's most respected award-winning investment management firms. With 25 plus years of rich experience in Indian capital market with deep expertise in long only and long short investment strategies he has conceptualized and executed triple a's unique radical resilient investment ethos and 3m investment philosophy towards consistent superior risk adjusted returns over the past 12 years now i'm handing over the mic to mr vikas agarwal who will in turn be handing over the mic to mr rajesh kothari over to you sir yeah thank you pragya uh, hello rajesh ji can you hear me Uh, you are. Uh, you have to unmute yourself, sir. Yeah, hi, Vikas. Absolutely, I can hear you. Yeah, yeah. Great, great. So, thank you so much for uh, taking the time out and joining this conclave. Uh, the whole idea of organizing this conclave is to educate and empower the investor community as a whole. And I take this opportunity to thank you for for joining the session. Uh, so, the format is very simple. Uh, so, post this. Uh, uh, I mean, now that the introduction is over. Maybe you, if you wish to run few slides, you can do so. I think we've already checked it, uh, and then we talk about it. So you know, they're saying that everybody in the industry uh, talks about you know keep on buying, keep on buying. Then the more you buy and the more you hold, the more the wealth you create. You know, but there are very few portfolio managers who to whom I see that they are uh, booking profits at the regular intervals. And Rajesh Ji or one of them, uh, it's been more than ten years of track record. what alpha accurate brings on the table and is the most consistent portfolio management companies in india when it comes to performance so today we are here to read your mind understand uh, you know more what makes you to book profits at the regular intervals a and how do you do so uh, that's point number 2 so all yours without any further do i would like to hand over this stage to you sir and mike please over to you thank you great uh, first of all thank you vikas uh, you know for providing us this wonderful opportunity and uh, i must congratulate you for the kind of efforts what you have taken to uh, make this entire conclave very very insightful and interesting and i'm sure uh, the viewers would also get a lot of uh, uh, knowledge and uh, uh, as as i always say in investment so maybe probably applicable to any other field as well every day you should try to make sure you reduce one of your mistake and if you do that consistently over a period of time uh you know you you know you meet your goal post uh so i think uh, this conclave will surely uh, help uh, your viewers and readers to uh, improve upon uh, their processes and to reduce that mistakes uh, to make sure the uh, wealth creation journey um friends uh, uh, you know good afternoon everyone and uh, uh, thanks to all of you for uh, you know spending th this time at this afternoon and uh, let me start with a uh, small uh, you know probably a uh, half a minute story and uh, i don't know if you have heard about uh, stalingrad battle the probably deadliest battle during world war 2 in the history and uh, during that world war time there were german tanks under the grass you know they all were hidden under the grass and all of a sudden they have been asked to come on the front line and the commander who wanted to make the tanks on the front line all of a sudden they realized that none of the tanks are moving when there were german tanks you know i'm confident this is german tank it has to work german signs everything was best but to their surprise they found that during the inactivity because there were months of no activity when the tanks were on ground and during that time mice had nested inside the tanks and in that process what happened is the mice eaten away the insulation 
which actually works if you want to fire the tank. And tanks didn't work. It was the deadliest battle and it's the most memorable and probably the most longest battle in the history of wars. The point is, in equity journey also, there are so many risks when you buy any businesses. The mice in your portfolios. Do you know them? Are you aware of them? Because at times I have seen many investors and they say we are so bullish on this company. This is my conviction portfolio. But they don't realize that there is a better cost Stalingrad during World War II. With that short note, uh, let me begin my presentation. Uh, let me share one of my screen. Please give me one moment. Yeah, sure. I hope uh, this screen is visible. Yes. Super. So basically what we are going to talk is agility and exit strategy. How important they are during your investment journey. I'm sure you would have heard many fund managers and probably many books on the street. They talk about how you select the stock, how you identify the so-called multi baggers. But uh, how many times you would have probably got the book on how to decide the exit strategy, what you need to do to remain agile. So in this very brief presentation, let me talk about, uh, you know, how we basically uh, do at our portfolio level uh, uh, while creating the uh, wealth for our clients, what we do, how we go about it and uh, how consistently we try to repeat that process on everyday basis. Being a guy, something very, very important. And let me give you a recent example of SVB financial crisis. I'm sure uh, all of all of you uh, would have uh, you know known by now that SVB, the 15th largest uh, financial institute of USA, uh, and it went under the uh, you know bankruptcy in no time uh, in a matter of just uh, one two weeks. Something happened. Think of it that if you are a founder of a startup company and you decided to put your fixed deposits under SVB Institute, the one of the largest, most respected, the institute which was featured in Forbes magazine, the institute which is supported by the best of the private equity firms and institute which has been awarded several times for the best of the practices. And therefore, you put your hardened money not only your hard-earned money earned by you, but also the money which is raised by outside investors, you decided to put under fixed deposits of SVB. And one fine day you realize that everything became zero. But what if, if I would have told you just two weeks before that, that the senior most management of SVB has sold their stocks and generated millions out of it. What if I would have told you two weeks before the collapse that SUV Financial Corporation has no risk manager, the chief risk officer is missing from last nine months. What if I would have told you the chief administrative officer is none other than the ex lemon head and has a probably very poor track record. What if I would have told you that SVB Corporation has very, very poor risk management and has an unhedge is bond portfolio? Of course, if I would have told you all these four things, you would have removed the fixed deposits from the SVB Financial Corporation and you would have been saved. But at times we are so confident that I am invested in 15th largest institute of US and therefore nothing can go wrong and then everything goes wrong. Being agile, it means you need to be agile enough to monitor the companies in which you have invested to keep checking whether everything is as per your initial assumptions or not. One very important thing I always often hear from uh, great managers as well as investor 
that history is a guide. And at times I wonder, how can be history as a guide? History itself is the study of change. How can you use history, which itself is a study of change, as a map for the future? You can't. Because we should remember the only constant is change. The ever-changing business cycles and dynamic consumer preferences that results in the winners changing over time and the business landscape changes and winners again changes. Every decade we have seen the winners are different and therefore history should not act as your guide. Yes, you can use history just as a tool for your overall analysis purpose, but you cannot take it just as for your guide. And why you should not take history as a guide? The classic example is Nifty. Look at Nifty 50. How it has changed in last 15 years. Do you know in 2008, the banking weightage in, in the Nifty was just 11%. And today, it has increased to 35%. And the industrial, the weightage of industrial in 2008 was just 11%. But today, it has further reduced from 11 to 6 to 3%. The weightage of telecom was 11%. But in last 12 years, it is reduced to just 2%. The great companies, MTNL, DLF, Chai Prakash, Z, ACC, Ambuja, Reliance Infra, Reliance Communication, all these companies were considered as a blue chip companies. Many of these companies now, they are out from Nifty 50. And many of these companies, they are down 95% from their historic high prices. Well, they were blue chip companies. So when, when investor or for that matter, any stock picker tells me that, you know, this is a blue chip company. I often get confused. What do you mean by blue chip company? Blue chip doesn't guarantee you anything. Yesterday's blue chips are today's red chips. And there is no guarantee that today's blue chips cannot become tomorrow's red chips. So the market's business cycles, the change is constant. You need to be agile enough to monitor the changes and take the required action. And why this change? The change because there are four factors, volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. According to the McKinsey study, the average lifespan of a listed company has reduced from 90 years in 1935 to just 18 years. Think of it. So when somebody tells you that the, on a going concern basis, I assume the going concern is going. That's a fact of the life. And sooner we realize it, better it is. But yes, investment journey is never easy. There are always turbulence during that long term wealth creation journey. And therefore, the margin of safety is very, very important when you look at any of your stock decisions. Margin of safety works at the sector level. You have to look at the sector level, stock level, as well as at the portfolio level. And friends, margin of safety is just not about the valuations. It is much beyond valuations. It is about can a company defend its market share? It is about can a company be relevant in the ever changing market? It is about can a company has a potential to disrupt the existing industry environment. It is about can a company remain resilient to withstand the external shocks and be agile. Let me give you one example. I remember during COVID times, one of our portfolio company, uh, I used to own that time Britannia. They were the first company who launched biscuits, home delivery of biscuits through Dunzo application in Bangalore. None of the other companies could do that. So a company which is a leader has to remain relevant. They have to disrupt their market. And if you are a first mover, that's where margin of safety concepts are. It is just not about the stock price. Margin of safety is at every different angle when you look at the businesses. One very important thing, the behavioral uh, book, one of the book I was reading, and there is an interesting data statistics. 
If you look at the India Road Ministry, 67% of road accident deaths, they are caused by overspeeding. And you know, which car gets accident by overspeeding is never a car which has a learning license level. It is only those cars where the drivers are overconfident about their skills. They have a 10, 20, 30 years of experience and they get that confidence. I don't know from where that I can't go wrong. And in that I can't go wrong, accident happens and deaths happen. 67% of accidental deaths are due to overspeeding. Same question you should ask when you are building a portfolio. Am I overconfident on a particular stock? And if you are overconfident on a stock, there are high chances that you might see big disappointment because you are so overconfident that you are not willing to look at the various risk factors. The Remember that battle, the mice, you are not able to uh, look at the mice which are not seen on the outskirts of tanks. And therefore, exit strategy is something very, very critical when we look at any portfolio. Agility is about monitoring cycles. It is about acting swiftly to make sure that you not only create wealth, but most important before wealth creation comes the protection of capital. These are just one or two examples. I just thought to showcase to you that what we did during last two and a half, three years. I remember the early COVID years, early COVID month, February and March beginning and COVID started entering India and we moved our portfolio from cyclical to defensives. We basically bought pharma and in a matter of four months, pharma stock gave us returns of four years in four months. And thank God we exited pharma because today probably they are below my cost price. So you need to be agile. You need to make sure that what is priced in, what you are getting, what is the earnings growth, what are the valuations, what are the risk to the growth, what are the risk to the valuations and so on and so forth. Or for that matter, another company called JB Chemical, I remember uh, we bought when valuations were 10 times and when valuation became 25 times, it was almost like equal to number one pharma company's valuations. We decided to exit because those valuations are never sustainable unless and until the growth is 40-50% compounded. One more example, recent example, I think six, seven months back, we used to own DVs. DVs is a very, very strong company. We like this name and we bought it at a very attractive price. And of course, we more than doubled our money. And when we saw that COVID is picking out in Europe and DVs is one of the large supplier of COVID related drugs to the world market, we said this profitability growth may not continue and at least for one or two years or 12 to 18 months, the company may enter into slow growth lane. And therefore we decided to exit because at 52 times, the margin of safety is in not in your favor. So you need to be always uh, conscious about what kind of growth you are buying into, what kind of valuations you are paying into that, and what if you go wrong in your underlying assumptions. Margin of safety, is nothing about but avoiding the bias. It is not about the declining stock prices. That's not the price. The price what you pay when you buy equity as an asset class is the volatility. It is that fear. It is not actual loss of capital because anyway, people don't sell. People have long term views. But when you are buying equity as an asset class, are you willing to take that volatility? because equity by nature is volatile. Volatility is the price what you are paying to buy that equity. And if you are mentally prepared that yes, volatility is going to be there and I'm not going to get uh, what I would say disturbed because of the high volatility, then that's the equity. First assumption you should have that I'm not going to get disturbed by the daily volatility of market. Then that's the class which will make probably biggest wealth for the investors in the long term. Please remember all great companies doesn't necessarily mean great investments. 
earnings growth is critical. If the company doesn't offer earnings growth, then the stock price returns will be also muted. And there's a classic chart of last 20, you know, 10 years. 140 out of 500 companies in BSE 500, they delivered 15% plus earnings compounded growth. And their market cap grew by 36%. And remember one thing, there is only one free lunch in finance, and that is nothing but diversification. Never be overconfident about a particular sector. Never be overconfident about a particular company. Never be overconfident about particular market cap. Never be overconfident about particular currency. And never be overconfident about particular business group. Please remember, product capital create wealth. Because if a stock is 100 rupees and if it goes down, say 90%, it becomes 10 rupees. But for the 10 rupees to become 100 rupees, stock has to go up 10 times, 10x. Those are never the easy journeys. So important is how in your daily investment management, how in your financial planning, wealth creation, you basically build a portfolio which can help you to generate not only wealth, but during bad times. You should not go down 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 percent because if your portfolio goes down to that extent, then recovery at times are very, very difficult. Just to conclude, please remember four things. One, equity markets requires active portfolio management. The regulatory monitoring of your portfolio is must if you want to create long term wealth. Second. Very important thing, lower risk doesn't necessarily mean lower return. A startup firm who invested in SVB Financial Corporation, his fixed deposit, he thought it is a zero risk. But at times, people don't know how to measure the risk if it is a debt market. In equity, at least people know, in debt, people don't know what is the risk. So a fixed deposit can also become zero. There is nothing called lower risk means lower return. And there is nothing called higher risk means higher return. At times, low risk means buying businesses supported by best of the management, best of the governance, best of the financials, best of the business mode. It means you are taking lower risk. And it is only this kind of companies can deliver you 15, 18, 20% compounded returns in the long term. Lower risk in equity means you get higher returns. Third important is margin of safety. Price is what you pay, value is what you get. That is about valuation. But margin of safety is beyond valuation. It basically, you need to make sure that a company what you bought, the business what you bought, you don't have a single customer. They don't should not have single market. They should not have only single product because then the risks are too high. You need to make sure that company what you have bought have a resilient businesses under its place so that they, may, they are the last one to fall if there is economic downturn. And last but not least, agility is important to avoid investing goof-ups. Discipline exits, rational base and process driven participation in equity market is necessary and most important for sustainable wealth creation. With that, I end my presentation. Uh, and yeah. happy to answer, you know, any of your questions uh, if you have. Thank you. Right. right. So thank you uh, so much, Rajesh Ji, for sharing your valuable wisdom with us. And the uh, story, especially that you talked about, it's very important that you have a recheck on your portfolio because, you know, at times you become more confident and then that is the time you start. I mean, your probability of making mistakes would be very, very high. Uh, so. Uh, I think uh, uh, this presentation went off very well. Uh, there is only one question uh, very quickly. So uh, last 18 months, we saw markets not going anywhere. Uh, so what's your views on the markets? Over to you. We have two to three minutes now. Great. Uh, so I think uh, that makes me very positive in markets because uh, uh, unlike Indira Vikas Patra, market never goes up every year. It has its own volatility. Uh, thankfully, now we have a 10% of price correction. October 2021, Nifty was 19,000. Now we are below 18,000, 7 to 10% price correction. From October 21 to March 23, 
it means 18 months of time correction. So if you put time value of money, there's another 10%. During this period, the earnings went up by 20%. So actually you are getting market at 40% discount. So the entry point is in your favor. The margin of safety is in your favor. And therefore, uh, I feel very positive about market, notwithstanding the short term volatility. And that's nature of market. You can't skip the volatility. As I say, it's going to be part of the uh, equity as an asset class. But from here on, if you look at from the growth perspective, entire world is looking at India. It is not only about you and me and the Indian investors. The world is looking at India for better growth. The world is looking at India for China plus one. The world is looking at India for Europe plus one. The world is looking at India for India's Aadhaar card case study. So I think India has a, a huge responsibility to deliver the growth. Uh, I think uh, all the structural reforms are in place. I think the as a organized sector, as the formalization of the economy further improves, you will see better and better GST collection, better and better EA bill collection, and that will further strengthen the government resources. Because ultimately then only from that income government can do capex, am I right? So I think uh, it's becoming stronger every day. And I always say that India has a number of bottom up opportunities. So a economy which can give you 10, 11 percent nominal GDP growth. And in that there are ample number of opportunities where you can identify the growth which can be better than the nifty earnings growth of the economic growth. And that's where the active fund manager role comes into play. And uh, so if you ask me, I'm really very bullish on the market uh, with three to five years time horizon. All right. So with that, uh, I would like to conclude the session. Rajesh ji, thank you so much once again for joining the session. It was great interacting with you. I hope all our investors have sort of uh, learned a lot from this session and, and we will share the feedback. So thank you so much once again. Rajesh ji. Thank you. Thank you, friends. Uh, and thank you, Vikas ji, for this wonderful opportunity. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thank you, guys.